Greetings friend, I will show you not only how Brimster solved this puzzle from a brand new Sudoku book, but also how his solve time compares against that of Sudoku World Champion. I'll also show you why this medium level puzzle may be tougher than you think. Solve along with Brimster using my pause the video moments. I got puzzle and book links in the description below and with that, it's solving time. Brimster starts out looking block two. There's only two places for a one because of this one and this one. So this is called Niter Notation. Anytime in a three by three block, you have two possibilities for a can. You mark it. In case you solve one, you can solve the other right away. Also leads to things like pointing and claiming pairs. He then does Snyder ones in block five. And then he moves on to the twos. And those is two places for a two in block one because of these twos. Then he sees two places for sevens here in block seven and he's able to make a solve because of the three in row six and this three in column two it's only one place for three in block four and if you're new to the channel i welcome you to smart hobbies subscribe and tap the bell for notifications if you want to turn your passing interest in sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby okay where else can we find threes look in block seven with these two threes only two places for a three we'll mark that and then what Brimster did is he finds a nine by noticing that you have a nine right here in column eight, and this nine in block five, and this nine in column seven, only place for a nine is right there in block six. He could have solved the seven right away because you have these two sevens. Uh, he missed it at the time, he does come back to that. Now let's look at where fives can go, all right? You see this five right here, can't be in any of these cells. So the fives are living in these two spots. This is a pointing pair. Since the fives have to be somewhere in block four, but they're limited to row six, a five can't be anywhere else in row six outside of the row. Because if it is, then you'd have no place to put a five in block four. And he's able to find another pointing pair of fives down here in block eight because of this five and this five. So now fives can't be in these three spots because of these pointing pairs. And then he finds sixes in block four because of this six. Can't be in these three spots. So the sixes are right here. Can't be in these spots anymore. Couldn't be here because of that six. At this point, Brimster, he's getting a little nervous because he's getting a little slow and trying to find new solves. He says, I'm competing against a world champion. So the book you get this puzzle from is called Enthralling Sudoku Volume 2. This is the 29th puzzle. It's subtitled Seriously Amazing Classics by Ashish Kumar. In the book, Ashish posts solving times by Kota Moranishi, who is the multiple winner of the World Sudoku Championship. So click on the description below if you want to buy this book. I love it, and I think you will too. Okay, after this, because you have these pointing pair of fives, and this five, and these pointing pair of fives, Snyder fives in block five. And then he started looking for restrictions within particular cells. So he notices there's only a six, eight, nine can go right here in block one. But this brings us up to our first pause the video moment. Pause the video and see if you can solve a naked single here in row three while I give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spot it. You notice there's a lot of restrictions in row three and column three and you see that a one two three four five seven eight nine cannot be in this cell it can only be a naked single six and then brimster removed the six from row three column one and then you notice with these sixes as a pointing pair and this six snyder six is in block seven after that he fills out the rest of row three you got a 129 and then 128 right there. Then he comes down and actually sees that 7 I talked about a little bit earlier. And then he goes to column 3, and he's looking for the places where you have the greatest restriction, right? So there's at least five cells filled out, like column 3 does. You can try to fill those out and see if you're going to get anywhere. So a 4, 5, 7, and then a 3, 4, 7, and a 3, 4. But if you're getting a lot of triple and quadruple center marks, you're probably not on the right track. And so Brimster's having a hard time seeing where to go next. He actually goes right here and fills out this block thinking there's extra restrictions because of these cells in row seven. It really isn't much. 
And then he sees something very interesting. This is a kind of a break point, one of the break points in this puzzle. He looks over here in block six, and he notices you got this two and the eight right there. So these cells are now limited because the twos are a pointing pair, but these cells are limited to a four or five hidden pair. And now the two and eight have to go right here. And this is gonna bring us up to that next pause the video moment. Pause the video and solve a cell in row three now while I give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations. If you spot it, you know that a hidden pair or a naked pair can act as a pointing pair. Since you have eights right here in block six, the eight cannot be in this cell anymore, and this has to be a one. You may be able to improve your Sudoku skills faster than you think. Click on the pinned comment to join the Smarty Party. I'll send you exclusive monthly puzzle packs, other exclusive content to give you more ways to solve hard Sudoku. And you want to solve hard Sudoku, right? And so by putting a one right here, Grimster is able to reduce the marks across row three. And then he removed the Snyder mark. Whenever you remove a Snyder mark or displace the Snyder, as I call it, you can solve the other cell right away. So he solves that for a one. Then notices that these four fives act as a pointing pair because they're a hidden pair. So this cannot be a five anymore. And he can solve five and block five. He then goes down here. He thinks because I put the two A here, there's got to be some restrictions. So he looks at row eight, column eight, and puts three, four, six. You really do want to restrict the center marking because it's just going to clutter the grid. And so Brimshaw's like, ah, that's not the right step. It also makes it much harder to focus on the quality deductions, I call them, where you need to look. So he goes over here to row five, and he notices you got a one, three, five, seven, nine, all the odds. So he starts filling this out, four, six here, two, six here, but this is going to be a two, four, six, eight, too many steps. And so it's really hard of where to go next. And this is the tip I'm going to give you here. You know, where you want to do when you get stuck, the reason Brimster's getting stuck is, most of these houses, so these rows, columns, or blocks, only have four digits. Like this only has four digits. You know, this only has four digits. It's hard to figure out where to look at next. This only has four digits. What's hard to see is that this four, five actually counts as two digits along with this two, eight, and nine. This is the row you want to be focusing on right now if you want to make some solves in this puzzle. And so the trick here. And if you want to reduce your solve time, is not worry about the complexity of the strategy, it's the follow on solves, where to look at next. And so what he does is he goes down here to row seven and starts filling out four, eight, nine, three, four, five, eight, and a four, five, eight. He's like, that's it's not right. And he's right, that's not a good place to look. Then he sees, okay, up here in block two, I got some restrictions, so two places for a nine, Snyder nines. And then he finally sees it. And this is going to bring us up to our next pause the video moment. Pause the video and see if you can solve a naked single here in row four while I give you a few seconds. Okay, what Brimster notices is that in these cells, you got a one, six, seven, a one, six, seven, and a six, seven because this cell right here can only contain a naked single three so congratulations if you spotted that naked single three give me a thumbs up if you did and drop in the comments i'd love to hear from you and with this three here now if you look at this cell can't be a one three four five six seven eight or a nine this is a naked single two which allows us to solve for the nine right there and solve the rest of row three you got an eight here and a two there and removes that nine marking. And then he removes the eight from row seven, column one, and notices he has a four eight naked pair here in column six. And then he fills out the remainder of block two, the three, six, seven. And what Brimster sees, you have a three, six, seven naked triple coming down column five. He thinks there's something there, right? And what it means is the threes have to be one of these spots. And so he's able to Mark that and remove the three from here because it's part of this naked triple. A three can't be anywhere else along column five. And then he thinks so there might be something more here. So he starts to make some more marks down the column. Two, four, eight, two, four, eight, nine. But he sees he's off the he's off the right path again. This is the 
trick with Ashish's puzzles is it's not a smooth follow on because you get one thing right, like solving this three and then these cells doesn't mean it immediately collapses. There's another place you got to look and you have to recage your eyes and see what does that solve give you. The thing he missed though is he could have solved for a two over here because they placed the two and block two. He'll come back to that though. And so he actually does at this point see that solves the two and then notices with these two ones or two nines actually there's only one place for a nine and block one and now he's going and block one here and says okay i only have a four five seven naked triple so he marks that and sees hey i got an eight nine here an eight nine there that means the eight nine are a hidden pair restricted to these two cells so you can block out that four put an eight nine there and now since you have an eight nine in these two cells in block seven this cell can no longer take a nine or you can just say hey there's a nine and this has to be a four which allows us to solve these cells all right so he marks out that four solves the three and solves the seven okay and then he puts uh the four five make a pair here and he misses an opportunity when you remove candidates from cell you should see what that does to the houses that are affected by it. he should look right here he misses a pointing pair opportunity if you see the pointing pair share this with a friend and see if they can solve it but we'll get back to that right now because you put the seven here and the eight nine here this has to be a one six naked pair we remove that seven marking and then that puts a five seven in row six column one and so then Bremster looks and says, okay, where can the threes go here? Because I got to get this three, I got these threes, and I got this three. Snyder threes in block eight. He removes the four from row seven in block nine in those two spots. And then he puts a two, four, eight in row eight, column five. Again, I we lost off the, the right path here. He does notice that... The twos are restricted to these two spots right there. And then it's going to lead us up to our next pause the video moment. Pause the video and solve for a seven in block two while I give you a few seconds. Congratulations if you spot it. You remember what I said about pointing pairs? And what Brimster notices is that the sevens are restricted to row two in block one. And so now a seven can't be in these two cells. You can solve this cell for a six, that for a three, and then you solve this cell for a seven. And like I said, whenever you make a solve, see what it does to the house that you remove candidates from. Usually that leads to some more solving. And if you like these tips, consider buying me a coffee or click on the super thanks in YouTube. I'd really appreciate it. After this, seeing that the six is right there, you can solve for two in block five and removes the twos there in column five and you can solve for two down here because he had the markings for the two and then he removes the six from row four column four because of this six and then after that because you have this two you can make some solves in block six right and disambiguate the eight and the two right there and then you can move across row five because you have this eight you can solve for a four and a six remove the six right there you see the one seven one seven naked pair it means this has to be a six after solving that six he's then able to go okay i got a four right there so that has to be your eight and that has to be your nine and then you look down in block eight and you have a full house here and so you can solve for the eight there and the four in column six after that brimster noticed that he can solve for the Three right here, row eight, column four, because you have just a three, five, nine, and the five and the nine are right there. So he puts the three there, makes this a five, nine. But we're going to be able to solve right away because of this eight. You can solve for the nine and eight in block seven and solve for the five and the nine in block eight. And that's what he does. After solving that, he looks for where three and a five can go row seven because the five can only be right here. It can't be an eight anymore, and that's going to be your three. He solves the three, solves the five. Then sees that you have a three and a four right here. That's got to be a six. And then he's able to solve and disambiguate, call it the one and six in block seven. 
always disambiguate whenever you can because it cleans up the grid and now we don't have to look in this area of the puzzle anymore. You can move on to other parts. He sees you have these two ones here and this one. He solves for one right there and then finishes up block nine because the only place for two is right there. That's got to be a four and then this has got to be your eight because of this eight right there. Then you can disambiguate the four or five in block six. And then what Brimster does is he marks a one seven here. Not quite sure where to go yet. And you have this one four seven right here. And I'm going to give you a bonus tip. You can actually solve this cell right now. Because if you notice, you have a one seven here, one seven here, one seven here. And this is a one four seven. I can tell you this is going to be a four as long as you know this puzzle has a unique solution. Learn more about uniqueness in this tutorial. All right. Well, now we're going to look at where a three can be here in block three because you have these two threes. It has to be in column eight. And then Brimster keeps working on here. He's like, I got to need a four and a six in column nine. I got the six right there. So there's your six, there's your four. I need a five and eight right here. I got my eight right there. So there's your five and there's your eight. And then he's able to go in column three and go, okay, I got this five. So you got to have a four right here and a five right there. And then he's able to solve for the seven in row six on one. And then he is able to clean up and go, this is a seven. That's got to be a one. And then this cell has to be a four, like I said, with the uniqueness. So it works. And then he does a seven and one in block five. And he does the five and seven in block one. Okay. I told you I'll tell you the time that Brimster did this puzzle compared to Kota Morinishi. So Brimster's time, 21 minutes, 48 seconds. Coda's time, which is put in Ashish's book, four minutes and 51 seconds. The world champion saw this four to five times faster than Brimster. That is amazing. Let me know how well you did in the comments. I also ask you to challenge yourself to solve this next puzzle faster than Brimster. I want to thank Brimster and Ashish Kumar for permission to feature this puzzle on my channel. And I want to thank you so much for watching.